You may have seen a video that we did a couple of months back about how tire width affects braking performance. Now, if you haven't seen that video, you definitely need to go back and check it out. It was a good one. But below that video, in the comments section, many of you were asking, how does tire pressure affect braking performance? And in that video, I was able to set my own preferred tire pressure, no questions asked, no problems. But today, well, strap on your seat belts, or I guess in cycling, it's buckle up your shoes tighter, because we're about to find out. Okay, so let's talk about some of what we're gonna be using in the rules for today. First of all, I'm gonna be starting out on these 32C Pirelli Cinturato tubeless road tires versus these Pirelli P0 25C tubed tires. It's gonna, it's gonna, this is gonna be a duel for the ages. I mean, 32 versus 25, it's like the old versus the new, the thick versus the thin. This is gonna be serious. We're also gonna come flying down this hill at 30 miles per hour, which is 48 kilometers per hour. We're gonna set a predetermined spot where we hit the brakes every time, and then we're gonna measure it out, just like we did in the other video, and find out how quickly we could stop and what the different tire pressures that we run and how that affects our braking performance. I'm thinking something like maybe just over 100 PSI and then all the way down to probably around 50. I guess whatever the manufacturer says is okay, we'll probably go with that. I think I'm just gonna lay the line down here. So I'll come down here, flying down, and then ugh, just send this right down here. Let's see how we do. Okay. The thing about doing these videos, I love doing these videos, but I'm seriously going to end up doing like a hundred reps of this climb right here today. Oh my God. Well, we got to go up from that. That was only 50 pounds of pressure. Now the thing with people in tire pressure, it seems like is that Everybody always thought back in the day, they'd have their 23C tires at 120 PSI, and they'd be like, when they'd have a flat tire, things would just go everywhere. I'd even show up to cyclocross races, and people would have their cyclocross tires at like 70 PSI, and they'd ask, hey, do you know anybody that does back work? My back is absolutely killing me. I think that we know by now that with tubeless tires and bigger, wider tires, that running 100 plus pounds of pressure in your tires doesn't necessarily always make the most sense, but we're definitely gonna find out how it affects braking performance right now. Heart's going, adrenaline's going. First test of the day. These are the 32 Chinterados at just at 100 PSI. We're gonna get this up to speed and then measure it out. All right, here we go. All right. Best out of three. Let's see what happens. One more time. We'll put a little piece of tape right here. Okay. 32 at 100 PSI. I did three tests. That's a 32 at 100 PSI. You know, the thing that I think I noticed about the 100 PSI is that it breaks free quicker. So on the first two runs that I did, I lost uh, basically the back end. It started to skid on me way sooner when I got on the brakes hard. So that was one big takeaway that I think I noticed immediately with the high pressure in these. So let's drop these down to 75 and see what happens. 80. All right, 75 on the dot. All right, well, that's my 32 over 100. And this right now is a little shorter. That's my marker. Just to see, I'll do another test. Just to confirm the result. Even shorter. This was my second attempt, and let's see. So I think that middle one, if I split the difference, that's what I did last time. I just averaged everything out. All right, let's bring these down to, to 50. Let's see how these do. All right. 
Here we go. Oh, that's nuts. <laughs> All right, everyone. So we've got some serious results here. I wanna hang on to it. I wanna give everything away, but this is some very interesting findings. What do you guys think? Should we do one more? Should we just go down to like 40? Yay! Just to see what happens. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see a pattern that's happening here, but uh, there is one. <laughs> How low do you want to go? All right, so we've got to switch these out now over to the 25C tires at 100 PSI. Has not happened in my life in a long time. And the bike is, <laughs> the bike is just like a little dart. It just darts all over the place. I can't imagine that. We used to race criteriums and stuff like that on these. It's definitely very different to have 25C tires on this, but we're gonna find out how these break under pressure. That's hilarious. That is dead spot on in the middle of the two spots. What do you think is gonna happen? Let's mark this one down. First shot. The exact same spot. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the test. <laughs> so the moment that you've all been waiting for the results, here we go. The longest amount of time that it took to stop was with 100 PSI with 25C tires. I know, you guys are thinking, what the heck? But it actually took us 1111 inches or 28.21 meters to stop. Our next tire was the 32C tire at 100 PSI, and that was 1055 inches or 26.797 meters. Back up to here, it was 75 PSI at 25C, which was 997 inches or 25.324 meters. Here we have 50 PSI in 25C. That was 980 inches or 24.892 meters. Then here we had the 32C tire at 75 PSI, which was 24.485 meters. Then way back up here, we had this bad boy, 32C at 50 PSI, 863 inches or 21.92 meters. And then, yes, the winner. 32C, 40 PSI, which was uh, 788 inches or 20.015 meters. Pretty unbelievable how that all worked out to, uh, to look at these numbers. The difference between the 32C tire at 40 PSI and the 25C tire at 100 PSI was significant. Like The difference between going through an intersection and being able to stop or not if a red light or an accident were to happen. So. I was really blown away by how much of a difference there was. And I would say everything that we did seemed pretty legit. I started at the exact same spot. I spun the bike out all the way, got it to 30 miles an hour and hit it from that, from that line all the way down here and got on the brake super heavy. I mean, it feels like uh, a very scientific way to do this, but I'm really happy with the results. I think it came out good and I think that we have some real tangible results here. All right, so that is a day at the races with our shoes buckled tight and well, we've got some results out of this. This was, of course, a very, very scientific way to do this, but I had a lot of fun doing it. Let us know what you think. Between the other video about tire width in braking performance and now with tire pressure in braking performance, I would love to know what you all think of what we came away with here today. Was it what you expected? Is it not what you expected? Will you be buying some wider tires and running them at lower pressure to potentially stop faster? Let us know down in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. 
All right, here we go. Okay, one last test. I can't just leave without not doing this test. Okay, let's see what we can do. How far can we go? Oh gosh, oh, ho, oh, oh. ho, I'm going still. I'm going. Oh, I'm, I'm past 360 inches. That's all I wanted to do. Woo! <laughs> all right, I don't need to measure it. I'm good. <laughs>